In today's video, I want to answer a simple question, and that is, why do I sometimes use hexadecimal instead of just decimal base 10 uh, when looking at certain parts of memory? Why is that useful? And to answer that, first we have to realize that basically everything in uh, computer science is in binary, right? So all the memory that we are working with is in binary at the end of the day. So it would be very useful to have a way to work with binary easily because, well, if we print out a 32-bit int, so have here, for example, int x equals, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say here 23, well, having this printed on the screen is actually kind of long as you know, in its binary representation. We'll have to print, to print this binary number on screen, and uh, this is just for 23 for a larger number, say 1,556, well, it's going to be probably around 10 digits long. So that's kind of tricky to work with, right? You cannot just print it out on the screen and figure it out like that. It's kind of difficult to follow each digit. So what's, what's a better solution? Well, a better solution, in fact, is the hexadecimal numbers. First, I want to take a look at what the decimal representation tells us about the binary representation. And similarly, what the hexadecimal representation tells us about the binary representation. Suppose I want to uh, take a look at the memory inside this X. It has 23 in it, but I want to take a look at each individual byte and say, I want to take a look at its, uh, I don't know, its eighth bit to see if it's actually set or not. How can we easily find that out? Well, if I print out its uh, decimal representation, so let's say here decimal colon and uh, here x and printf hexadecimal. Just like that. And if we try to launch this, we're going to get actually two numbers. Of course, the first one is the decimal 23 that we wrote, and the next one is the hexadecimal representations so of base 16 representation of our 23, right, which is 1,7. Now this 1,7, well, we'll get to it right away. But first, let's find out what information we can get out this 23 about the binary representation. Suppose we don't actually know it. Well, we can get something out of it, not much. We can say that, okay, 23 is an odd number. And because it's odd, that determines the last bit. The last bit must be one if it is odd. Otherwise, well, it uh, wouldn't be divisible or it would be divisible by two. So it's uh, this decimal representation tells us about the number that uh, we have something on the left and it must end with a one, with the bit one here. And indeed it does in the representation itself. Now, what does this 1,7 in hexadecimal actually tell us about the binary representation? In actuality, it tells us everything about that binary representation. And that is because of a certain property of bases that are powers of 2. So binary is a power of is a is a base that is a power of 2, it's 2 to the power of 1, of course. And hexadecimal is 2 to the power of 4, right? 16 is to the power of 4. And it is a base that is a power of two. Okay, fine. But what is that property? Uh, so that property is if we take the hexadecimal representation here of that 23, which is one seven, and we convert digit by digit each each digit to binary. So we convert first the one here. Well, one in binary is still one, but we have to make sure we have four digits for binary digits for each hexadecimal digit. So I'm just going to pad it to the left with three zeros. Okay. And then we convert seven to binary, which is, well, it's just one, one, one. But again, we need four digits. So we're going to add here a zero. And if we cobble all that together, right, we're going to get the actual binary representation of our 23. As you can see, it's the same exact number by using this very simple method of converting this seven and what this one seven into binary digit by digit. So because of that, at first glance, to me at least, if you exercise it enough, 
uh, these sort of conversions, it's going to be very easy to notice that, ah, okay, so this guy is 0001, and then there's three ones at the end because of that seven. So it's, it's uh, 10111 at the end and it's all padded with zeros, of course. This is why hexadecimal is very useful in computer science, because of this conversion, this very quick conversion from hexadecimal to binary. And, and you can even do it the other way around. So let's pick a, a different number. So let's delete all this and let's say we want, I don't know, I want uh, this number. I don't know what it is. Let's convert it to hexadecimal. It's very easy. What we have to do is just group them into four digits, into four digit groups, so like that, and then convert each four binary digits back to a uh, hexadecimal digit. So here we have 0101, zero, one, zero, one, and 0101 zero, zero, one is actually, well, this is definitely four, and this is one, that should be five. So it is five in hexadecimal, okay? And 1110, well, that's definitely more than 10, right because this is eight then that's four and that's two so eight plus four plus two that is 14 so 14 in uh, base 16 is actually the digit e so the number that we have written in here in binary it's actually 5e Okay, but in a concrete sense, how is this useful? Like, okay, we just decided that we wanted to see the binary representation of 23, but what, something more useful, something, something more tangible. How about we have a, an integer that we don't know if it's positive or negative, we have no idea, and we want to just take a look at its, uh, its sine bit. We want to know whether its sine bit is switched on or off. We can actually do that. So suppose this number is actually uh, a negative number, so I say minus 13. If we, let me actually remove all these comments because that's not correct anymore. Um, if we run this, you're gonna notice that, okay, in decimal just says negative 13, but in hexadecimal, we can actually confirm that the first bit, which is the sign bit for the integer is actually one because F in hexadecimal or in binary, from hexadecimal is just four ones. And since, well, we know that conversion uh, translates really well to binary, we know that the first digit inside this number, first binary digit is going to be one, which means that the sign bit is set. And while this, okay, this may not uh, be that useful if you're just going to work with one integer, but if you have multiple, uh, arrays of data that you're working with, you can simply check uh, whether or not, let's say this digit is either F or E or really any number uh, higher than eight. So if it is eight, nine, 10 or eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E or F, if it's any, any digit in those uh, digits, that means that the first bit is uh, set and that means that the sign bit is set and that means that the number is negative. So just one more example here we have an array and suppose something happened with the memory inside of it and I don't know why or what and I just want to check if it's okay um, and I'm just gonna print it out on the screen print out the memory in hexadecimal form on the screen uh, byte by byte. Here we have, right, here we have 16 because a, an int is four bytes, so four times four is 16. And here I'm printing each byte using this format specifier that says, um, so it is saying that I want to print it in hexadecimal, but it is just a single byte in hexadecimal, that's why HH. And then this zero two just says, pad it with at least have it two digits. So if it's one, have it be zero one on the screen. That, that's what this does. And this basically just iterates over all the elements, all the bytes inside that array. Okay, that's why I'm casting it to char pointer. Before looking at the hexadecimal values, let's take a look at the decimal values. So I'm gonna change this to a D, just like the percent D we always use. And as you can notice, okay, it's kind of all right, except for the negative numbers that we get. It's negative three, negative, 11, uh, negative one, one, 
and 22 it's almost useful uh, but for example this 22 doesn't tell us much aside from I guess this is this actually fits inside one byte but if this 22 let's say was uh, bigger let's say 22,000 then if I launch this well I'm gonna get minus 16 and 85 which make no sense right and uh, in hexadecimal all this is very nicely printed on the screen because well first things first we can notice the zero one and mind you we are on little endian so uh, these four bytes are for the first int these four bytes are for the fir for the second int and so on and so forth and the least significant byte is the first one uh, so here we have the five that we have on the array and then here we have negative three and we can also notice that its sign bit is set not this f because since of little endianness this is the first the last byte uh, but this guy this f tells us that it is actually a negative number because again it does translate to just one 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 and this is going to be the actual first bit of this 32 bit integer and means that the number is negative and similarly with f055 well we cannot really say much about the number but we can say for sure that it is divisible by 16 and also that it is a positive number because this zero right this just translates to four zeros in binary that means that the sign bit is off is set to zero and that means that the number is positive so as you can see this does give us some valuable information and if something was corrupt here let's say I somehow overwrote this part with uh, FFFF it would be quite obvious what's wrong and you would be able to notice uh, not like with decimal where they don't actually have any sort of meaning to the binary representation of this of uh, these numbers all right, I hope this was useful and you started understanding why we use hexadecimal in computer science. I do have a course on Skillshare about not only hexadecimal number, but conversion between different bases, right? So uh, between a base and decimal and between decimal and another base. And I also cover this sort of neat trick where you can convert a base two number very easily in a base 16 number and back and forth okay which you can check either up top or on the description in the description down below okay thank you guys so much for watching and take care